Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today I'm going to show you how to install bigger brakes on your car. Now the brakes that I've got right here came off of a 2003 Volkswagen GTI and I'm going to be throwing them on the Golf. You can tell by the brakes behind me, they're not only rusted, but they're quite small and they're not going to be doing that great of stopping power when you press the brakes. When I swap and install these on the car, I'm going to notice a huge difference in braking performance because of a couple things. Number one, the piston attached inside the caliper is a lot bigger than the one that's on there. On top of that, this disc is vented and it's cross drilled and slotted. It's going to make sure that the pad has optimal contact on the brake rotor at all times. The vents are going to be keeping the disc to stay cooler and the slots are going to be able to shave off a little bit of dirt that's on the pad every single time it goes over it. The thing that's going to make these brakes stop better even more than those two factors that I just named is because this brake is a lot bigger. The rotors that are on here don't even compare to the size that are on here. When you have the wheel and it's mounted on the car, the brakes don't look that big at all. I'll show you right now what it looks like. You can see that there's a lot of room for improvement for our new brakes to fit. Not only are these brakes going to fill out that wheel and make the car look a lot better, but it's going to be able to stop the car in a much better stopping distance. So the new brakes I've got right here, they're loaded on a hub and it's got the caliper, the pads, the rotor, all of it, all assembled right now. So to install this on the car, we're going to have to remove this bolt that's on the back side, disconnect the brake sensor, and then swap all this out. Now you've got this right here is the brake pad wear indicator. This is the wheel speed sensor. And back here, this is where our tie rod is going to go. So we're going to have to take all that stuff off the car now in order for us to install the new brakes on here. I'm going to have to essentially replace all of this stuff down here in order to swap it over. And while I'm at it, I'm going to replace the springs. So right here, I've got the stock strut and spring, and I'm going to change out this spring right here to a lowered one. So the first thing that we're going to have to do when we're going to be installing this brake kit is we need to remove the axle back there from out of the spindle on the front. So if you can tell up front, you've got a little nut and that thing is going to be holding the axle into it. So I'm going to have to remove this in order to get access to it. Now there's two ways that you can do it. So option one is with an impact gun. So you're going to get this, mount it on there and you can zip it off. It's going to take this little nut off of the splines that are in there. Now if you don't have an impact gun to take it out, that's not a big deal because you can get by without it. But you're going to have to do something a little bit different. So if you can tell, I've already got the wheel off. The way that you're going to have to take it off if you don't have an impact gun is like this. So if your car isn't in the air, this is not going to work. You have to drop it back down onto the ground and put the car neutral with the emergency brake on. Now to crack that bolt loose, you're going to have to turn it to the left. So if you're in here, you're going to have to get this and twist it. Can you see in the air how it's not really working because the wheel is spinning? With the car on the ground, you're going to have to get the socket on there and twist it off like that. Only at that point are you going to be able to remove this. Now if you're at this stage right now with the car in the air and you don't want to put it back down to take that bolt out, if you have a friend or whatever, they can go in the car and press the brake pedal. What that's going to do, it's going to keep the wheel from moving so that when it's still in the air, you can put the socket on there and break it loose. So if you have an impact gun with a socket, you're going to put it on here and then remove it. Just like that. Now I'm going to put this back on here just so that nothing moves around when I take everything else out. Now if you guys have seen my other videos, you know how to take care of a tie rod end. And it's very simple. We need to take the tie rod end out so we can get access to the spindle. So it's very simple. Just grab a set of needle nose pliers and push this little cotter pin out. With it straightened out, we can feed the cotter pin through the back side of the castle nut, just like that, and then pull it out completely so we can take it off. Now save this, we're going to need this for later. Grab your socket, attach it to the end of your impact gun, and take this out. Now if the ball joint isn't coming out when you try and pull on it, if you grab your castle nut and you thread it back onto the bottom of the stud, we're going to be able to hit this out. So just like that, thread it so that the back side of the stud is butt to butt with the end of the bolt. So feed it on like that, and then hit it. Just like that. And then you can take it off, and this will come right out. 
Now, because we're gonna be taking the entire assembly here off of the strut because we're gonna be replacing it, we need to remove this bolt back here on the back side of the knuckle out. Now, this bolt can be a pain in the butt sometimes only if you guys are working with an older car, but if it's a newer car, you're not really gonna have anything to worry about. Now, more often than not, that bolt that's on the back side of the knuckle is gonna be very difficult to remove if it's an older car. Because that's exposed to the elements, if your car is rusty just like this, your best friend is gonna be a torch. This is gonna help you out a lot in getting old, rusty bolts off of the car without snapping the head off. In the video that I uploaded for you guys not too long ago about my brother's car and installing lowering springs on it, I actually snapped off one of these bolts. Now that exact bolt that was on the back side of the knuckle snapped right off when I was using a breaker bar to get it loose. Now I didn't use any heat and because of that, the thing snapped right off and I had to drill the entire hole to remove this little piece of metal, which is essentially the bolt that was stuck in there. So my message to you guys is that if you guys are working with this and you don't have a torch, for whatever it's worth, definitely go out and buy one if you're working on a rusty car. Heat is going to be your best friend in tackling rust, so if you don't have one, definitely look at getting one. The next thing that we're gonna have to do is take out any of the lines that are here for the electronics. So we've got the one sensor over here, this one down here that's connected, uh, what is that? That is the brake wear indicator, and the one back here branches off, and this is the wheel speed sensor. We need to take both of these out so we can take the hub off the car. And all you do is pull out the little cable from the little bracket that it's attached to. And then at that point, you should be able to remove the entire thing. If this is your first time taking any of these bolts out, WD-40 is gonna help you out a lot. So just spray down the little area that's stuck. So say that, if that was still installed there, with a little bit of WD-40, if it was like that, and you spray some on, it should come out in a matter of no time. Now something too is that once you take them out, if you wanna make sure that they're easy to put back in later, use some 3M silicone paste on the little connections right here where they contact the metal so that they don't corrode and basically fuse together. This stuff is safe on a rubber so you guys can put this on there liberally and you're not gonna to have to worry about any of the cables not coming off down the road. So with the electrical cable loose, we need to remove this little attachment here so we can take this off. Now this is connected up front to the brake wear indicator once you take that bolt out, we can remove this entire cable from the strut assembly. Now you're gonna to need to take out both connectors for this, for the brake pad, and for the wheel speed sensor. And they both work in the exact same way. So you're gonna to have to get inside of there. And I've got a little tool that I've got right here that's gonna be able to just push up the connector that's holding it in. So with it like this, you just get your little piece, your little pry bar tool thing, whatever the heck you wanna call this feed it inside the connection down, and it's gonna relieve the little tab that's holding it in. So like this, push down in on it, and the entire thing should just pull out like that. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna help you guys out as much as I can in this. So for the wheel speed sensor one, because there's not a lot of room between where the sensor goes, right there, when that fits in, there's not a lot of room to get in between the back side of that and the knuckle. So if you can, remove the bolt that's back here to pull out the wheel speed sensor, and that might get you out of a little jiffy. But you can get in there and pry from the bottom side on that little tab, and the entire thing should come out. It's just gonna be a little bit more difficult. If you're more stubborn than that piece, you're gonna get it out no problem. At that point, the entire electrical harness is free from it. So just get this, set it aside, and then we can move to the next step. So now the only place that the entire spindle assembly is attached is at the bottom, down there, those three bolts, and at the top of the strut, up there. Other than that, we've got our little screw that we've already taken out for the axle, and that's it, that's all that's holding it in. So I'm gonna start off first by removing those three bolts down there at the bottom to take it out. At that point, you can see that this is basically all freed up other than at the top of the strut. So once we take that out, we're basically gonna be home free. So right now at this stage, the only things that are attached are the spindle through here and the assembly up top. So we can take our strut out and this entire thing will be able to be removed. Before we do that, we're gonna have to take out this bolt down here, set that aside, and then with the hammer, hit the back side of up here so that the entire thing will break free. Now this assembly up here might be stuck, so the knuckle might be fused and rusted 
to the strut. Now, an easy way that I like to take it out is to get some WD-40, really saturate this entire area, and then afterwards, get a hammer like this and hit the top part right here. So with a hammer, try and hit on this side and alternate, and then the entire thing should drop down. Can you see that little lip? That means that that area right there broke free and it moved down about an eighth of an inch. Right now we can see that it's free, so if you can, get your jack, get your jack over there, put it underneath this, so that when we keep hitting this thing, it's not gonna fall to the ground as soon as we let it free. So if you can see right here, I've got the jack and I've got enough room to put my finger under. So I can keep hitting this down without it falling to the floor. As I keep hitting it, you can see that it's moving down even more and more. So before I do this, I'm gonna now have to take out the brake caliper line right there and clamp it off so that I can remove it. Now you don't have to do this, but if you clamp it off, you'll basically be cutting off the circulation to this line so that when we remove this bolt back here to the caliper, the brake fluid isn't gonna be flying everywhere. If you keep hitting the knuckle, it'll break itself free from the bottom of the strut and you'll be able to remove it from the car. Now stupid me, I didn't realize that I couldn't do this without taking the brake and caliper off. So before you guys get to this stage, do that in advance, only because you're not gonna be able to push the axle through the backside. So what we're doing now is pushing the axle shaft back that way so we can remove the entire hub from the assembly. Because right now it's all loose, everything's removed from it, except for the axle. So by pushing this through, we're gonna be able to remove it. Now make sure when you guys are doing this, when you're putting, when you're pushing this through, don't use any impact tools, only because you could damage the axle, and at that point, you're getting yourself into a much bigger job. I'll actually be doing that in my next video, replacing an axle on the passenger side, but I'll get into that later. But in the meantime, keep pushing on this until the arm and everything is all the way through. And just like that, it's out. All right, so how awesome is this? These are the new brakes that are gonna be going on the Golf. These are the new ones, and those are the old ones. Look at the size difference between the two. We got stock, if you couldn't tell right there on the left, we've got the aftermarket ones right here. This is gonna be a very big difference for braking power. The caliper is different sized, it's got a bigger pad and a bigger rotor as compared to this. So essentially all that we're gonna be doing is, now that we removed all of that, we're gonna be putting it all back on, but with this guy. So this is a new one, and we're gonna be throwing it on there. But before I do that, this is all ready to go. Before I do that, I'm gonna come in here and change this spring. Now I've shown you guys before many times how to install lowering springs. It is so easy on this car. So usually when you do this, you have to take out the strut right there, that's on the back side of the, the knuckle where it would be, remove the three bolts that are at the top, and remove the bolt at the top for the spring. On this thing, it's even easier. So we've already got that out. But if you look up here, where are the three nuts? You take this off, and there's one. That's it, you take out that one bolt, and the entire thing essentially comes apart, and you change the spring. And the best part is, the back is even easier. So if you come down here underneath the car, you're gonna have your shock absorber right here, your new spring, and everything. All you have to do, is remove that one bolt down there at the bottom. You push on the lower control arm area thing, so this entire subframe kind of area. Push that down, take the spring out, and replace it with that new one. If you're looking for a video on how to install lowering springs, you can check the description. But for today, we're gonna be out with the old and in with the new. So with our new lowering springs in, it's now time to install the new brakes back onto the car. So something to note is that when you guys are installing the new hub and everything on the car, you have to watch out for these splines. Now on each one of the axles, you're gonna have little splines that go forwards and backwards that slot into the new hub. 
So you can see inside of there you've got your wheel bearing, which is basically your hub, and you've got each one of those little splines. Now when you're installing it, make sure that they all line up, because otherwise you won't be able to thread the axle through here. So I'm quickly just gonna take this all apart, so remove the one little bolt right there, and then take off the caliper so I can install and mount the hub onto the car. So the easiest way that I've found to install the new knuckle onto the axle is to first thread it through the splines so that the threads come all the way through to the front side of the knuckle and then put the nut on there so it doesn't go anywhere. After that, I was then able to twist the knuckle so I could put the bottom of the strut in the top of the knuckle. To allow the bottom of the strut to slide easier into the knuckle, I applied some 3M silicone paste on the bottom of the strut just so that it would slide up easily when I put some pressure on it. When you're putting the lower control arm ball joint part down here in, if you want to give yourself more room, you can make more leverage by using a pry bar. So if you get this, you feed it inside this hole, you can push on it down, and you can basically move this entire thing around to make it so you can feed those three bolts back underneath the bottom. Just like that. Now if you can see those three holes, one there in the middle, the other one there, and there's going to be another one on the back side back there. All those three holes are now aligned and you can thread those bolts back in. Once those bolts are in, we need to push this little knuckle up onto the strut more. Now to do that, you can use a hammer or pry bar or whatever you want to use, but all you have to do is just push it up so that it's up to where it was before. Now if you put any kind of grease, like a silicone paste, or WD-40 up in here, it's gonna make it go on a lot easier. So just spray down a little bit in there and start hitting. Grab your mount and keep hitting the bottom side of the knuckle until it's all the way up and inserted into the strut. You can see how there's a little bit of grease that's up there, but right now, that's perfect. That's exactly where it was before, and that means that we can feed our bolt through the back side right there. Now, if you guys plan on doing this entire modification, the bolt that you have back here that goes through the back side of the knuckle, this one right here, the nut and bolt, throw it away because this is a stretch bolt. What you're gonna need to do is get, replace it with a brand new one and feed it from the back side. So one of these stretch bolts, essentially what it is, is whenever you put the nut on the back side and you apply torque to it, the bolt itself will stretch and as soon as you use it once and you apply torque to it, the torque on the second time that you go, if you want to reuse it, is going to be off. So whenever you're going to replace that, make sure you use a new one. Now you don't need to make it tight. As long as it's in there, it's not going to go anywhere. Now that this is attached and in there, we now need to thread and install our outer tie rod back into the back side of the knuckle. So take the castle nut off right here, turn this out, and then feed this through the back side of it. Then grab your castle nut and install it on the bottom. In there. Tighten it up with your socket. And then grab that cotter pin that we were using before. Straighten it out with a set of pliers. And then feed it through the back side. And you're gonna to wanna to push it through. You're gonna push it from one end all the way into the other. And then once it's at this point, you're gonna basically be splitting and opening up the cotter pin. So it wraps around both sides. There's the one, and there's the other. Now here comes the fun part. We're now gonna be installing the brakes onto here. So before we do anything, we need to get the brake rotor and mount it on the face. So take out the little bolt that's right here on the hub that locks it in. Grab your brake rotor, mount it up like this, and that little bolt that we just took out Feed it back through here so it locks it in place. Now not all cars have this, but if yours, oops, if yours does come with it, it's a good idea to mount it back on. All that does is hold the brake rotor flush up against the hub. Next step is we need to mount the brake caliper onto the back of the knuckle. So grab your entire brake system, grab your two bolts, and feed it from the front up to the back, just like that. Thread both of the bolts, the one on the top and the one on the bottom, first by hand, and then afterwards follow it up with a wrench and tighten both of them up so they don't go anywhere. 
Now the next step is we need to mount the brake line up into the caliper so that we can get the brake fluid from in here into here. Now what that involves is taking out this screw with the two copper washers and replacing it with a new one. So just take off the one copper washer on the front, the bolt, and make sure that the bolt comes with that other copper washer. If they don't come out, you need to replace it because if you double washer it, you're not gonna have a tight seal. So you're then gonna get your new banjo bolt, feed your new copper washer over top of it, put it through the back side of the brake line, and make sure that you install your other copper washer on this side so you get a tight fit. Get this and thread it on the back side of the knuckle and start feeding it in from the back side and tighten it up. Now only at this point when it's completely installed should you take this off because as soon as you remove this, all the brake fluid that was in here in the lines is gonna come shooting down the brake. Something to note is that if you get any brake fluid on any of your painted parts down here, the brake fluid is gonna eat away at the paint and you're gonna be left with a crappy finish. So get a spray bottle and just drench it in water. We then need to hook up the harness for both the wheel speed sensor and the brake pad wear indicator. We need to hook both of these up to the strut so that they don't get hit as soon as we put the wheel on the car. Now any of the bolts that we put in that aren't tightened up, it's now time to go ahead and tighten everything up to make sure it doesn't move. Now we've got the bolt back here on the strut. We've got a couple of bolts down underneath that we need to tighten up. After that's all tightened up, you can then go ahead and bleed the brakes, put the wheels back on, and you're setting on your ways. Now it's very important when you guys are installing this on the car, when you guys take the nut off of the axle, it's very important that you tighten them up to the proper specification. Now it can be a very different spec, like for this car, you have to install the wheel axle nut to initially 148 foot-pounds of torque, you then loosen it half a turn, spin the wheel half a turn, so lift the car back in the air, spin it half a turn, and then tighten it to 37 foot-pounds of torque, and then an additional sixth of a turn. So it's very different. If you guys are unsure what the spec is for your car, check your service manual. You'll definitely find the torque in there. And if you can't find it there, go to your dealership. They'll have all the torque figures for every single bolt on your car. So if you guys are stuck and you need a number, go to the dealership. They'll be happy to help you. Again, if you guys have any questions regarding the video, throw them down in the comment section below and I'd be happy to help. Again guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. While I'm at it, why didn't I put bigger brakes on the back of the car? Well, that's because the front ones take care of between 70 and 80% of all the braking that's needed for the car. So the back brakes, they don't really do that much. Now with that being said, the front brakes are not only larger, but they're vented. And that's because they need to take care of a lot more weight than the back. The back brakes, on most cars, they're a solid disc. There's no veins on the inside of the disc so air can circulate and cool the brake down because the back brakes don't get that hot. That's just the way that it is. Because of the weight transfer, when you stop and slow down, the weight is gonna be shifted to the front of the car and then the front brakes are gonna be put under stress. If we were driving in reverse a lot more than we do and we really needed that braking power, the back brakes would be bigger. Because we don't, the front brakes are needed to be bigger, stronger, and beefier to withstand that extra heat. And that's why upgrading the fronts makes such a big difference.